WandaVision, episode five. Um, to start off with, they, they open the show with uh, family ties, with the whole drawing of the family and everything. And they also did full house thing. Um, because of course, you know, the Olsen connection, her sisters did that show. Um, I used to say that Marvel did the better movies and DC did the better television with their cartoons and such. But it was like Marvel said, wait a minute, DC does better television, hold my beer. And they started with WandaVision. Oh my God, it's getting better and better and better. Um, it's leading into Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, which is supposed to be uh, Marvel's first horror movie. And you can see aspects of horror in the WandaVision. The Vision comes back from the dead as a flash quick, and then now he's back regular live again. You know, the kids are growing. Um, Agnes, who I believe is Agnes uh, Harkness, is slowly starting to say, you know what, I um, doesn't make sense to keep pretending like I don't know what's going on. She's revealing to the audience, maybe in a cry for help, and she's revealing to Wanda that she knows what's going on. And she's starting to get surprised that Wanda can tell that she's in a fantasy world and she, she really doesn't care. Um, there's a lot of things that happen in this. I don't want to give it all away. This is a little bit spoilery, but I don't want to give everything away. But the kids, it appears that they have the ability to age themselves. They can grow the way they want to. There's a dog, Sparks, that they bring in and he uh, passes. And the kids are like, hey, why don't you just bring him back to life? I mean, you can do that. So they are aware of what's happening also. And Wanda is aware of both sides of her hex. In the comic books, they were called hex spears. And now since a hex are gone, they've decided to name them hex. You know, or Cisco Ramirez type, um, which was cool. So they've named them hexes. And of course they are. And she um, exited it to confront them. So she's aware of what's happening. She's aware she's controlling it. Maybe she's not aware that somebody's controlling her, but she's aware that she's controlling, at least for the most part, everything that's happening. And she confronts S.H.I.E.L.D. And she is clearly more powerful than him. Jimmy Woo makes an observation because they say, you know, she can't be this powerful. It doesn't make any sense. She's never displayed this kind of power. And Jimmy Woo makes a uh, um, a, a thing, Agent Wu, he makes a um, a comment that made sense that I talked to a friend about not that long ago. She was kicking the glue out of Thanos when nobody else could. And he had to rain fire in order to get her off him. Even with the Infinity Stones, she was going to, you know, well, he didn't have them at that time, but he was still Thanos. He beat up the Hulk pretty easily dusted Thor, you know, but he didn't stand a chance with her. And then somebody says, well, Captain Marvel. And I noticed that Monica Rambeau paused for a second and she's like, click. And she paused for a second. In the comic books, she's Captain Marvel, at least one of them. There's four. So she was one of them. So I'm wondering, was she remembering those times or was she remembering herself as Captain Marvel? I wonder, because she definitely acknowledged somebody saying that name and kind of paused and stared into the camera for a second. And I'm like, that's telling, that means something. But um, there's so many things that happened. They hinted last episode about the Fantastic Four. So I'm kind of curious what they're gonna do with that. But there was the big reveal in this episode, I just I just got finished watching it, so I'm still a little bit, 
you know, hyper from watching it. It was good. They had um, the big reveal, and it's it's Friday. I watched it first thing in the morning, and now I'm ready for next week so I can see the next episode. So they had the big reveal, and she goes to the door. If you don't want to know the big reveal, go to the end of this video because I'm about to give it away. You got about 30 seconds, so be prepared now. So the big reveal, I was thinking it was going to be Doctor Strange. It was not. It was actually um, Quicksilver, Pietro, but not the Quicksilver from our or the MCU universe, the Quicksilver from the X-Men universe. And he's here. And then they noticed it and they're like, she recast Pietro because she basically pulled another Quicksilver into the universe. So I'm wondering, does he know he's from the X-Men universe? Or did she just create him and they use the same actor? But he's still Pietro. I also wonder, does that violate any kind of contracts that he's playing the same dude? Well, I guess that Marvel owns him now, so I guess it don't matter. But he's playing Pietro, which also makes me think that um, Wolverine could come back as Hugh Jackman if they wanted to, since they're pulling guys. She's pulling people from the other universe. And the, in the Marvel comic books, there's different universes. 616 is the one that you would generally read. That's the name of the universe. 616 is the one that you would generally read in the comic books. But there's other ones. Different people have the ability to travel through the dimensions to the other dimensions. Some of the dimensions are very similar to this one. Slightly different. So maybe seeing how this one leads to multiverse of madness, then maybe she's opened a doorway and she can pull people through. So, also with the vision being brought back to life and uh, Monica Rambeau noticed her clothes were still her clothes when they came out of the bubble. So she's saying things that she makes in there is real. They can leave the bubble. So the kids are real. They can leave the bubble. The vision's back. He's real now. He can leave the bubble. So Pietro, the new one, her brother's back and he can leave the bubble. So I'm thinking, wow, if this is really Mephisto's doing and he, you know, materializes inside the bubble, then that means he can leave the bubble. Mephisto is Marvel's devil. And in the comic, he's the one that's making all of this happen through a different dude. But he's doing it. So, like I said in another video, he's doing it and he's using a dude named Master Pandemonium to do everything. Wanda's kids were his arms. Ah. So, that happened in the comics. So, I'm thinking they're cutting out, you know, that guy, Master Pandemonium, going straight to Mephisto and he's doing it. And I'm thinking, if he appears in that bubble, then he's real now and he can leave because he's just an abstract right now. He can affect the world, but he doesn't really exist in it. But if he shows up in that bubble, then yeah, he will. And I'm thinking that's why Doctor Strange's multiverse will be filled with madness, cause the devil's here. It's supposed to be a horror movie. And if you wanna make a horror movie, you can have a vampire, you can have a werewolf, you can have a crazy dude with a knife, you know, something like that. But what's scarier than the devil? Nothing. So I'm thinking, yeah, if they're going to go out, they're going to go big. I mean, they got to go bigger than Thanos, right? The devil. I can't wait. I can't wait till next week. I want to see what happens. I, 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 I'm excited. But that's how I feel about it. In fact, I'm so excited that I'm going to give this week's episode of WandaVision... Nine bags of popcorn. Nine bags of popcorn, man. Because that's what I think about that. More importantly, what do you think about that? Now that you've seen the video, did you enjoy the video? Did you enjoy the content? If so, like, share, and subscribe.
Corn Passport.